Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary. Over the last few days, we have examined Samuel's life and seen that God had chosen him to be his prophet, but had rejected the house of Eli as Israel's religious leaders. In Samuel chapter 4, we see how the poor leadership of Eli's family led to that destruction. When we went through the book of Judges, we saw the people of Israel struggle to take full possession of the promised land. Some of their enemies had remained in the land. The Philistines were some of those enemies. Israel ended up fighting them many times. In the battle that's found in chapter 4 of 1 Samuel, the Philistines were again warring against Israel. And Israel was defeated. They were losing the war. Israel failed to consult the Lord and decided to just bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord with them into battle. So what is the Ark of the Covenant? Now, if you're thinking about Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, you're actually kind of on the right track. In that fictional movie, the Germans viewed the Ark as a magical device with power to give them victory. That same mystical and fictional view was present in the Israelites when they brought the Ark into the war. In reality, the Ark of the Covenant was a wooden box that was overlaid with gold that was crafted at the direction of Moses. It held the tablets of the law. It was kept in the tabernacle in the area called the Holy of Holies, and it was considered to be the throne of God representing his presence here on earth. So the ark was a sacred item meant primarily for worship, not for war. But the Israelites decided to use it for war, and they did it without asking the Lord if they should. So Eli's good-for-nothing sons came along with the ark into the Israeli war camp, and the soldiers of Israel let out a loud shout for joy, thinking that they were going to now win the battle. Well, the Philistine army encampment heard that shout, and they knew that the ark had come into the Israelite camp. The Philistines became afraid that they would have to fight against the God who destroyed the Egyptians with all those plagues. But rather than run away, the Philistines were emboldened, and they decided to fight with as much courage as they could muster, as much ferocity as they could drum up. And here's what happened. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated, and they fled, every man to his home. And there was a very great slaughter, for 30,000 foot soldiers of Israel fell. And the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. God was not in the battle to accomplish victory for Israel. Instead, he was rejecting Israel's religious leaders and bringing on them the destruction that he had promised. You remember that Eli's sons were very bad priests, and God had rejected them and all of Eli's household. When the news of his son's deaths and the capture of the ark reached Eli, he fell backwards out of his seat, he broke his neck, and he died. Phineas's wife heard the news, and she was pregnant at the time, and the emotional turmoil brought on the birth of her son. And she named him Ichabod, saying that the glory, that the glory has departed from Israel, for the ark of the God has been captured. That's the end of chapter four. It's kind of a cliffhanger. And I hope you will go back and read the whole chapter so you can get all the details. But here's what we learn from this passage. God is not a magical trinket or a good luck charm. He is God. He is the ruler. He is sovereign. Um, he deserves our utmost respect and worship. God is the one who decides how he will be worshiped and approached. Today, we don't need to worry about the Ark of the Covenant 
our way to worship, our way to draw near is to trust Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way to experience victory in this life. I hope you will trust him and that you will consult with him today about the battles that you face. I hope you'll remember to worship with us this weekend at one of Calvary's four campuses, and I'll see you again on Monday. Have a blessed week.